All right, this is the Bridge Tourism Commission Wednesday, May 17th meeting, times 303. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Take roll call. Laura Carpenter. Here. Aaron Crawford. Here. Becky Brown. Here. Rick Thomas. Here. Uh, Kristen Napier could not be with us today, and I'm Bill Weston. I'm present. Uh, does that take a few minutes to review the agenda? Does anybody have a motion to approve the agenda as is? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Go. Motion and a second. The, all in favor? Laura? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Becky? Yes. Rick? Yes. And I approve it also. So approval of the agenda passes. Uh, we have minutes in the package. I uh, want everybody to take a few minutes to uh, review them. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as they are? Mr. Chairman, I make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Take a roll call on the approval of the minutes. Laura? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Becky? Yes. Rick? Yes. And I agree as well. So the approval of the minutes pass. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to introduce Aaron Crawford. Uh, Patrick has. Uh, had to leave the uh, the commission, and Aaron replaces him. Aaron, you'd like to tell us a little about yourself? And uh, yep, um, I graduated from Berea College in '09. I came to Berea in 2005, so I uh, lived here longer than I have lived anywhere else in my life. I'm originally from North Carolina, but my wife and I fell in love with this town. I've worked for Boone Tavern since '05, since I was a student. Done a little bit of everything there. I just recently accepted a position as food and beverage manager, so I'm in charge of the operation side of the restaurant now. Uh, before that, I was sales and marketing, worked a little bit at the front desk. So like, like I said, I've done a little bit of every, everything. Uh, when I'm not working, I enjoy photography and getting out and hiking. So, you know, the Pinnacles is my favorite place to be. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, welcome to the commission. Uh, this public comments time. Is there anybody like to make any public comments? All right, there's no public comments. We'll go on to next. Abby Crow Boone Taverns on the agenda, but she's not in the room. So we'll. Let I didn't hear that she wasn't coming. So maybe if she shows up later, we can move her yeah. with your approval to the end of the meeting. Uh, she's a new employee of Boone Tavern, and she wanted to come and share uh, herself with us and introduce what she's going to be doing for Boone Tavern and so forth. So yeah. I hope that she does show up. Well, perhaps not this time. Next time. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Uh, so it leads us to the uh, director's report. Donna Angel, would you like to take it from there, Donna? I am uh, foregoing doing a report for you today so that I can take us through our budget because it is that time of the year again for renewing and doing a new budget for 23-24.
for our fiscal year. Some of you were at our work session last week when we went through it. Uh, I think most were here. So I'm not going to go through every line item that we have on here, but I do want you to ask any questions as we go through uh, if anything pops to your mind. In your packet, you will find something similar to this, which uh, not in your packet, it's a separate attachment. If you'll go to that. You will find that, and alongside that, you will find a sheet called your justifications and narratives. This sheet will explain the line item numbers that we go through on our actual budget sheets, um, should we need explanations or questions as we move along. The first page that you'll find will be our revenue, and I do want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we've had a very good two and three year recovery process from COVID to where we are now. So we think that we will stay good and stable going into 23 and 24 again uh, with a slight improvement, I do believe. Um, so this year on our revenue for the transient room tax, we have beefed that up about $25,000 more anticipated funding for next year. Uh, and I do believe that we can meet that. Uh, we're not even finished with our year this year, and we're already at 170 almost on that. So, um, and that's through uh, the end of April, actually. So we will definitely be in a good position to make our 200,000 for next year. The restaurant tax, we are doing uh, fairly well with that also. We have beefed that up some, I do believe, with all the new uh, restaurants that we do have currently with us and things that are coming, along with good seasonal trade that we have out there, the motor coach, uh, coach travel buses that are now booking lunches and dinners with us as well. So I do think that we'll uh, have a good year on our um, restaurant tax as well for next year. I'll skip down to halfway down on your page on revenue to your far left, you will see grant proceeds. And I do wanna just uh, explain that just a little bit. You were in our um, work session or budget session last fall maybe, or maybe January, but we talked about where we tourism did receive a grant, an ARPA funds grant of $142,000 and that was put and amended into our budget in January at the end of the year when we amended budgets and so forth. Um, so that was why 23 was set at 183,000. 142 was that, plus we had a small EDA grant that we received that was close to 28,000, plus our 13,000 state grant uh, of matching funds. So that currently uh, brought us close to the 183. For fiscal year 24, right now, we do not anticipate any more monies coming our way other than our matching uh, advertising grant through the state of what we anticipate 13,000 there as well. And that may fluctuate a little bit more due to the transient tax and the hotel rooms along with the Airbnbs and the campgrounds this year. So that's one thing that um, will help us on that small grant increasing some as well because that is based off the overall rooms that we've had in the past. So we've normally run about 450, 500 rooms in Berea. So now that we can count the campground sites that are rented nightly, uh, the Airbnbs, we have, that increased us about 165 or 167 rooms. So that helps us look at a different piece, you know, with losing Creekside Hotel um, and possibly something else. So that will make a big difference for us there. But anyway, we cannot count that income again because that was credited into last year um, on our grant proceeds. Um, the next thing down, miscellaneous income for 23 and 24, if you'll look toward the bottom of that. The miscellaneous income, just to remind you, was $17,000 that we received um, 
or it was fifteen thousand dollars we received from ag credit to put an awning on the old ford building at the chestnut street pavilion so that is currently in the works and excited to have that going up son and then we had received another small grant of around seventeen thousand that will be used and is currently being uh, renovated as we speak on remodeling the inside of the Ford building, tearing out the walls and trying to open that up into one large room that we can accommodate more people uh, in different services that we can offer there for different groups in town as well um, with a small um, warming kitchen area. So that uh, will not be counted into 24 because we're probably gonna use that money pretty soon here. So we'll wrap that up in the 23 budget as well. The transfer to and from other funds, 135,000 there. If you recall, this may have been uh, a couple years back, two budget seasons back, I think, but we voted to assist in giving funding to uh, the Scaffold Cane Trail as well as the Ellipse Project, the usage path that we were working on at that time. And uh, that has not been able to happen so far with the city on that. It probably will come very quickly, but I don't know. We've not been really updated on that, have we, Mayor Fraley, of a date. So we do want to honor that and keep our funds there. And we did vote at last year's budget session that we would allow the city to use that for one or both projects or whichever way they wanted to do that on Scaffold Cane or um, all for the Ellipse Trail as well or pass it, use this path it as well. So anything else that draws your eye on the revenue source for next year? If not, we'll move on to our expenses. Um, to your left, you'll see expenses and we'll start with personnel and we'll just go through uh, the budgeted salaries for 23 and 24. Um, we discussed in our work session that we are putting funding in to hire an assistant to work with me on different projects and to help me in all three areas going forward. So we have budgeted that increase will be for a full-time person there along with proposed salary increases for our employees, our full-time employees. Below you will find seasonal part-time staff that too we have increased uh, we have built into the budget whether we use it or not we have built into the budget to hire two seasonal trolley drivers so based on the fact that we still want our trolley and are searching for that uh, we do feel that it's going to take two people to be able to alternate on that um, if we get to operate it nine months out of the year uh, so we'll have two uh, CDL drivers for that position as well. Going on down, the next change we had here was uh, natural gas. Our gas bills have come down drastically. Um, so even moving it back up some, uh, counting for the toll building to be completed, um, I, I think we're still in good shape on all of that. So. Um, we've reduced that down by about $8,000 and that's on several of our properties that we have, rental properties that we have as well that don't use gas anymore. So um, we're in good shape on reducing that number down. Our next line item change would be our operating, general operating supplies. We have increased that by $2,000. I think once we have the toll building going, and we put the Chestnut Street Pavilion and the Ford Building behind it to good use for reserved parties and picnics and so forth that we are gonna need more operating supplies up there um, to keep that um, going as well. Next line item is our fuel change. We did change that again from 2000 to 5000 in working with Chris Walsh from our Public Works uh, Division, uh, our maintenance mechanic, 
all of you have met him at um, come up he's come and spoken to us about our trolley so on reviewing things that would affect us on the trolley he's made the suggestion that we really increase that amount um, of difference for the trolley based on a nine month basis if and when um, we kick that into gear so that will be our change <coughs> of three thousand there we have office furniture <coughs> and equipment this goes back to the renovation of the toll building and um, we do I say this all the time but we do hope to get in there and get that finished and renovated and once we do that we are going to have to furnish the building with furniture as well as gallery items so um, with the budget we put it in there for a hundred thousand if it works out great and if we use it great and if we don't we've saved money but with everything we do have furniture upstairs that we will be able to use for office space upstairs but we are going to have to have tables for the conference room back there and different things like that that will increase um, quite a bit with everything else that's increased over time uh, the equipment rent and lease we've reduced that from 5023 down to a um, Oh, I'm sorry we've gone up 6,000 um, let me think a minute to equipment to see why we went up on that postage machine um, oh yes we had a drastic increase on our metered machine that we have for postage and so forth so uh, with that and picking up the additional work that we will be doing on brochures that will be going out to additional welcome centers because of the motor coach buses now being fully active again so we have increased our postage in that area um, as well and building and grounds in our work session we talked about how we really were too thin on that so we have increased that 20,000 more building and grounds we currently pay 35,000 on landscaping services so that will leave us a good 30,000 for all the rental properties that we have that would call for upkeep and maintenance of which we have many that need servicing um, right now as well any questions on those before I go to the next page okay um, the vehicle repair and maintenance again that's increased from 2,000 to 10,000 and that again is due to the hopes of purchasing a trolley so that we're prepared for the annual maintenance uh, it'll be more like quarterly maintenance on the trolley to keep that up with tires changes oils and different filters uh, and so forth for the trolley so we have an increase on that right there our special programs as this will go back the biggest majority of this will go back to our ARPA funds that we received of 142,000 last year the EDA grant and the 13,000 matching grant um, we can't claim the income again and we haven't spent the monies we've spent just a tiny fraction of that on paying for our new brochures that we ordered and one of the motor coach conferences have come out of this so the funds are still available what we have left in here will become expense items going forward into the year on those the additional things that we have um, and we always try to work to be able to support the community and other things is we leave funding in there to support other marketing areas that draw tourists and visitors into our city and that is primarily driven to the other festivals that go on within our city uh, so we want to always show our support support to all of those in different events that we know uh, we'll carry on for um, bringing com uh, tourists into our cities we strongly support the Celtic festival um, we love the Christmas parade the library Halloween in the park 
our Japanese Sister City program, uh, our conference events. We are really focusing on really trying to attract and become a better, bigger destination point for the motor coach buses as well. We are getting more and more, which is great. Uh, I think Ethan is not here today because he is out with a new agency that is looking at our services for their bus lines that want to visit Berea. So we have uh, big hopes that we can help work with getting more conferences, whether they're local, surrounding counties, or whatever they might be, into our city. So we're excited about that. Um, but we have a lot of good programs in here, Spoon Bread, the Guild, um, our Christmas events, and so forth, that we uh, always want to show our support in um, their work as well that brings and helps our city. Anything else on special programs, where the money is, and so forth? Okay. I'll, I'll move on down to our next line item change was our grant awards. This is our reimbursable marketing um, account. In the past, we've always allowed um, an amount of line item funding to support other events that brought in tourists, large tourist groups, to our city. Uh, by doing those things, um, it of course helps the entire city in different projects as well. But what we've found over the last couple of years through more research work through Danny and so forth is people want hands-on entertainment. They want really live music and they want to be able to do things as couples and friends and so forth. So we've decided at our work session that we will move uh, 5,000 off of that and move it into our music concerts and different little events like that that we can support more in the community overall with. We will leave 5,000 in for any reimbursable marketing event that we feel that would bring tourists into our city. And again, this is a program that someone would come and present to us what their plans are and in the final stages they would present their paid receipts to us and we would have the option of paying them back about 50 percent of what they've spent on their marketing their paid marketing ads so um, and we've seen less and less of that due to facebook and social media um, you know the cost is very minimal for those kind of things anyway so I think the community um, is really excited about getting more things going on and around town, so we'd like to use that extra 5,000 to move and circle in different areas with as well. Um, let's see, the beautification program, we did beef that up, uh, $5,000 there. Uh, we had wonderful compliments all throughout the holiday season for our Christmas flags and so forth. Uh, I think it added a nice touch to our city, a warmth and a welcome for the holidays. So we wanted to do that again for our summer spirit that's here. We have not only coach buses that are now traveling through our city, but we have more and more groups that are coming here to visit and other cities that are coming to visit us as well. So we find that we're really um, a medium niche for people to really see how we've changed our city through our arts and our crafts and grown and kept that live and vibrant while still exploring all other activities in Berea through our outdoor adventure piece as well as our shopping and so forth along with our fine dining. Uh, so we've had great diversity groups that have hit Berea that uh, want bigger and better things and we're just excited that we have the chance to be able to do more of that. So this summer, uh, hopefully in about three weeks, we'll have new street flags that will be going up with Welcome to Berea in the city summer uh, flags as well and we want to reorder uh, down on Broadway. If you've noticed, um, the flags are getting pretty thin and skimpy down there. The wind has destroyed them over the last couple of years. So our company that we're working with is really a very 
uh, good company to uh, work with us when I say I have a budget of X amount of dollars what can you give me you know so uh, they're doing some drawings for us right now to replace the artisan village signs and to get new color and new flags down in Old Town to spruce up Old Town as well you know so we have good things that we can do there that highlights our whole city automobiles next one under there we uh, a change there you will see we were currently uh, last year budgeted 195,000, and through that we bought a uh, vehicle for tourism, and we also bought a used uh, truck for um, I think it was a 1990 vehicle that we had. <laughs> so we desperately needed a new pickup truck for tourism down there for all the running we do with um, soil and projects like that um, so we took that amount out from purchasing those and we left in there uh, the approved budget of 150 that we approved um, in our budget last year uh, for a trolley again once we find that mysterious trolley <laughs> it's going to be worth it I promise <laughs> you know so those will cover the changes I see on this page. If anyone has any questions before we go to the next page. And on the final page, um, I don't see any changes there at all. So um, the transfer, um, admin, indirect, um, we might have a couple of new people that aren't aware of that, but that one is our services that, uh, that we pay uh, to our city finance, uh, through our city finance department for all of the billing and auditing that covers us for the state level and so forth and our bank accounts and managing uh, all the things that they do for us as well. So there was no change in that this year at all. So glad to hear that you know but I will open the floor to any questions that you might have um, with anything any questions or concerns or things that we might have forgotten about I just want to say thanks for the beautification I know we've talked about that a lot and congrats on the new vehicles <laughs> thank you <That laughs> they well love them <laughs> I'm so happy um, but I would like, I think, I'm hoping that our beautification, the money we spend, will encourage if the city, we're trying to take care of our resource, our properties, I encourage landlords out there that own next to our properties, that they put a bucket of paint on them. And I'm hoping that it'll be contagious because that's some of the complaints that I get in the community is, you know, they'll say, well, that building looks terrible. And I'm like, well, it's not owned by us, <laughs> you know? And I just, I hope whoever's listening out there, you know who you are, you property owners, spend some money and let's make it look as beautiful as we're trying to. That's a beautiful point. And thank you for sharing that, uh, Laura, because I do believe once people see something, sometimes it's gotta be a vision and then you're gonna jump on and do it. Uh, and I do think that everyone cares about our city and that they'll jump jump on uh, I love what we're doing on Chestnut Street and Broadway I mean taking it all the way out with our new bypass area everything is improving and we are looking very very nice we have on the business development side we consistently get calls and inquiries of property to lease rent by and that just shows you that we look good to outsiders so we just have to work on maintaining that and keeping that alive because we need to that we owe our city that everybody does we live here and it's home so thank you for sharing that okay if we have no more questions mr. chair I will ask you to call for a motion and a second and then discussion and approval Donna, before you before we do that can I just say um, you did a remarkable good job of presenting this and the hard work you put in to, uh, to bring this together. I know this is a stressful time for Thank get all these numbers together. And I just want to point out that this budget reflects our goal of trying to find areas where we spend our funds that not only attract tourists, but local people can enjoy the fruits of that expenditure too. And I think this budget <clears throat> reflects that. Thank you, and I agree. It's not about one or the other, it's about all of us, so yes. Thank you, Rick. 
there's no other further questions or comments on the uh, budget do I have a motion to approve the budget as is I'll make that motion do I have a second I'll second uh, we got a motion and a second we'll uh, have a roll call vote uh, Laura yes Aaron yes Becky yes Rick yes and I approve it as well the budget passes as is thank you and thank you all for working with me on the budget it's not just one it takes a team to do that and I appreciate your support and everything that you do for our city especially tourism thank you um, move on to the staff reports do we have a operations manager report by Nancy thank you All right, um, so for the operations manager's report, I wanted to start off again with our visitor numbers. We're still on that upward trend that we've seen all year. So um, we are up 299 visitors for April compared to April of last year. And every month we've seen that our um, visitor numbers compared to the year before have increased quite a bit. Um, so that's really good. You have the visitor chart in your packet so you can look at all the previous months and years if you're interested in kind of comparing those um, you can see all the way back to 2013 and uh, we also had this um, I'll just say this for Aaron and anybody else who may not be familiar at our office we do these touchless bags so during COVID a lot of folks didn't want to come in um, so we put bags outside the door with information for people to pick up so that's what you'll see under the column bags so if you're wondering what those are those are the kind of the grab-and-go bags we have seen that um, after hours people like to utilize those and pick those up when we're not open so we have a few more of those bags going out still even though we're through that pandemic some of our special visitors this month was the sunshine friends that school group came mid-April we had 18 children tour the Welcome Center and train station that morning and 11 in the afternoon and they had six chaperones with them so we had a wonderful time taking our pretend train rides anywhere the children wanted to go um, we make it a very educational uh, day for those pre-k and elementary students that come in and um, they just have a fun time pretending and taking a ride on the magical train in our lobby we have a glass display case many of you are familiar with that current display is the Ellen Day promotion so we're pushing that um, before Ellen Ende, we'll switch it over to the festival of learn shops and the craft festival so we can kind of get some promo and exposure on that during Ellen Ende. so that's our plan for that we've had so many different projects taking place in the artisan village and around town I know um, in the past Donna's talked about the hotel and that entranceway there is now complete we've done some sanding and staining to the wood in that entrance I know the staining we may do uh, kind of a darker color um, as time goes on with that just kind of give it that bright fresh look um, flower box planters throughout town our team has repaired a lot of those as you know they're aging um, all those wood boxes are needing some attention so we have kind of went around try to repair the best that we can and they are all planted and being utilized looking beautiful the welcome center has new LED lights being installed um, we had uh, um, quite a bit of rain a while back and so the team installing those was able to come and spend um, a day with us and we're waiting for another kind of rainy day spread for them to come back to finish that project inside we've had a few other little projects that Public Works has helped us with they've been really a great help on everything uh, we unwinterized our water at the office our outdoor water spigots and realized one had actually still frozen busted so they were able to help us kind of get that repaired and ready to water all these beautiful flowers that we have the Public Works also helped our team move a lot of items from the Ford building into the toll building in preparations to renovate, do some small renovations in that space. Um, so we just thank them for all of their help. And um, as we had mentioned in the past, we're still looking for those. We're in the market to get some new or at least one outdoor trash can and some umbrellas for our uh, picnic area in the Artisan Village. Um, those are actually way more the outdoor trash cans are way more expensive than you would have ever imagined um, so if anybody has a hookup on some uh, more competitive pricing or knows of a great um, company that we may not be aware of please let us know 
Last month, uh, Ethan and I traveled to Huntsville, Alabama. I had a great time uh, there at the STS Domestic Showcase. I know uh, Mr. Crawford was there as well. And uh, we met with quite a few different operators and 30 third party organizations there. And we just had a great time networking at all the luncheons, the Lunch and Learn breakfasts, and, um, or sorry, the breakfasts that were, uh, <laughs> Uh, learning events as well as the lunch and learn so those were really great networking events that we were able to attend we actually met some journalists there um, and just kind of met a large array of different people and one of the journalists that we met was uh, with premier travel media and the president of that company actually came through Berea last week and we were able to meet with them and uh, learn about some new marketing options for the group tour industry most of you know we had the special needs gala event um, earlier this month it was such a beautiful evening and there were so many partners in that event but it was just a beautiful evening for all the children of madison county from the msd classrooms and i'm sure that other people have things to say about that but i mean it just really was such a beautiful evening we were uh, very excited to be a part of the team of help facilitate and plan that and um, two of our reception staff members uh, offered photography for the evening and as well as a lot of other work that folks had offered but it was just a beautiful beautiful evening for those kids and their entire families ellen and day june 17th from nine to four i know i keep mentioning that um, we are still kind of moving along in the planning stages of that we're taking vendor applications still but we do have vendors and exhibitors signed up to join us from a lot of different areas. So Florence, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio, Liberty, Kentucky, obviously Berea and Lexington, Cox's Creek, Kentucky, New Haven, and Clemson, South Carolina. So we'll have exhibitors coming from all those different places and hopefully we'll have a couple more sign up to join us. And as you know, we're uh, collaborating with the Bria Volunteer Fire and Rescue Department for the car show that will take place on Ellen and Day. Um, that'll be a great addition to the event. Years ago, we had that collaboration, and um, I think the fire department had some special training that annual weekend, so we've kind of played around with the dates and was able to kind of join forces again. So we're excited about that. Uh, the fire department will have a DJ on site, so there'll be lots of fun music and activities uh, with the car show. and. I know we have kind of sent out some notices and emails about that day, but the car show will be from the four-way stop going up North Broadway, kind of in the area where the old big rocking chair used to be. So we'll, have, we'll utilize a lot of that area for the car show. And then our front lawn will be full of children's activities. Hopefully we'll have our big tent set up. Um, and then our vendors will be on the back platform of the train station selling train memorabilia and um, different children's items and train collection items. And inside the depot, we will have model trains set up for all those um, young and older children that love to uh, kind of enjoy that. We see a lot of adults actually coming to enjoy all of those model trains. There will be um, hopefully a lot of merchants in the Artisan Village will set up tables. We've encouraged them to set tables up outside um, with some of their sellable items and just kind of increase some of their sales for the day. StreamGo Media has offered their parking lot for use for um, all of our merchants in the area. So that will be a great alternative to folks in that area to be able to park that day. And uh, we have offered any shuttle service from that parking lot to their galleries or businesses um, if they need any help like that. So we've tried to be accommodating the best that we can. We'll have some special handicap accessible parking spots in front of the Old Town Shops building that day. Um, so we've really tried to kind of look at um, all of the different parking situations and really be inclusive and um, help um, provide parking for every different situation that we might have. Last year, we had over 700 guests through the Welcome Center. And with the car show edition this year, we anticipate seeing that number increase. Um, so we've tried to make plans for special parking and um, kind of navigating people throughout Berea that day. So our Chestnut Street um, concert series kicks off this weekend. We have 10 concerts planned. Um, I'm excited to be able to work the first concert. So I just wanted to remind everybody uh, that May 20th, this Saturday from 7 to 8.30 at the Chestnut Street Pavilion is 
uh, Kelly Caldwell and Cashmere. The concert, once again, is from 7 to 8.30. It's free. The Bria Volunteer Fire Department will offer concessions. So come hungry, bring your lawn chair, and join me for a fun evening of music. And then lastly, uh, just a quick little update on the craft festival and um, kind of my pieces of that, still collaborating with the team on all the coordination and communications with that. And um, as I mentioned last time, I um, have the pleasure to work on the sanitation piece. And so we now have all of our porta pots, hand wash stations, um, and our dumpsters reserved. And um, everything uh, all the arrangements made for delivery and pickup of those items as well as delivery and pickup of tables and chairs for that weekend and lastly our team helped um, distribute some of the promo material for the craft festival throughout berea so if anybody needs a poster for craft festival ellen and day or the chestnut street pavilion concert series i might have a couple left over if anybody needs any of those to display you all let me know that concludes my report for you. Nancy, um, I'm glad you said that. Um, could you ask the uh, someone to take some to Boone Mini Mall? I had a call there that there's two shops that didn't know about the craft festival and they don't have posters. So if we could uh, market that area and visit with them, that would be great. That would be our pleasure. I know that we took some to that area and we must have just missed a couple folks. Thank you so much. Anything else? Thank you, Nancy. Uh, are we going to skip the motor coach today, or is somebody going to do that for Ethan? I'd be happy to read uh, his report for us. All right, let Donna uh, do that. Let me see. Maybe I will. And I will just read what Ethan has prepared here. Uh, dear commissioners, during the month of April, we welcomed several groups to our city, including the Citizens Progressive Bank Group, U.S. Tours, Colette Tours, RJ Tours, GTB Travel, and more. These groups brought in a total of approximately 250 visitors to our city, contributing significantly to the local economy. The highlight of April was the Citizens Progressive Bank Group visit on April the 12th. We welcomed approximately 40 visitors to our city. They had a fantastic time at the Artisan Village taking part in demonstrations and enjoying the shopping experience. We also had the pleasure of hosting Colette Tours twice in April and they had a great time shopping as well. In addition to welcoming visitors to our city, we also worked on developing new relationships with travel companies. During the month of April, we worked closely with Village Travel in Wichita, Kansas to plan a future group tour to Berea. We met Danielle Giesling from Village Travel at the ABA in Detroit in February, which was one of the conferences they attended. And I will be meeting with her on May 17th, which is today, to discuss potential collaborations. Uh, so Denise is here today visiting with Ethan and visiting our city. Furthermore, we are pleased to report that in May we are set to welcome the Vega bus with 23 people, including 18 in blacksmithing class and 5 in jewelry class. We also have the count, uh, Country Travel Discoveries bus visiting on May 20th. Both of these groups will be provided step-on guided tours and shopping in Artisan Village and throughout the city. In terms of numbers, our April efforts have resulted in an increase of approximately 5% in tourism revenue compared to this same period of last year. This is a significant achievement and testament to hard work of the entire team and the growing popularity of our city. In addition to our regular operations, I also attended the Southeast Tourism Society's 40th Annual Domestic Showcase in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, April 17th to the 20th. This is a great opportunity to network with tourism professionals from the Southeast and make appointments with companies. 
During the showcase, I met with approximately 20 companies and provided them with personalized emails regarding our discussions. Uh, May tourism meeting, Ethan. Lastly, I had a meeting with Je Jeff Gayduck to discuss marketing for motor coach and group travel companies. Following our meeting, Jeff shared a proposal prepared by Cheryl Rash that includes a simple itinerary, strategic content marketing, and brand advertising in their themed arts and cultural edition, as well as digital advertising in their weekly e-newsletter. This well-rounded program will amplify our brand and help me to make better connections with decision makers in the group space. We are currently reviewing the proposal and will keep you updated on the budgeting process. Overall, we are pleased with the progress we have made in April and are excited about the future. We remain committed to working hard to bring more visitors to our city and to ensure that they have an enjoyable and memor uh, memorable experience while they are here. So, good report. Thank you, Donna. Uh, we'll now hear from the program manager, Liz Todd. Hello, I'm Liz Todd. I'm the program manager for Bree Tourism. Um, I have a touch of laryngitis, so I'm going to kind of keep it short and sweet. <laughs> um, let's see here. So in April, we were very, very busy. We had a great month. A couple of meetings that have been mentioned and a couple haven't. Um, so I'll focus on the ones that haven't been mentioned yet. Um, we had the honor of hosting George Brown Travel. I actually got to work with them when Ethan was in Alabama. Uh, there were 31 guests. They were from Atlanta. They shopped and had a box lunch, so that was really, really nice. Um, we had a lot of meetings leading up to our special needs gala, which was mentioned, and it was really an honor just to be a part of that. So always grateful for that time of year and um, just a very fulfilling and, and, and wonderful opportunity. We have continued to work on craft festival so we had those meetings as well as we were able to attend the private financial ribbon cutting um we had a miles media grant writing zoom training cybersecurity training so now i can't log into like any of my bank apps or anything because i don't know my passwords i'm just kidding um <laughs> we had an ellen and day logistics meeting and um i had the honor of being able to do one of the employee appreciation interviews, which was really, really nice to be able to mention how important my role is here in working with the people of our community, um, as well as the attendees of our learn shops. So that was really nice. Uh, we did wrap up our Enchanted Spring Learn Shops um, the final weekend of April, 29th and 30th. I'm gonna have to wrap up because I am gonna fully lose my voice. So um, I just, a couple of cool things that I was able to pull demographic wise um, from the analysis on Eventbrite. You can see this at the bottom, the colorful chart here. The stats on people that attended in April, um, traditionally, unless it's during the festival or make it, take it, give it when people are traveling for the holidays, we traditionally just have guests from Kentucky, sometimes Tennessee or Ohio. Um, but this one, we had attendees from seven, seven different states, which is very exciting. And these are ranked in order of number of tickets purchased. So that was kind of a big deal. Um, and then <clears throat> I'll let you all read through my report. <laughs> but I have also been finishing up all the planning for the Festival of Learn Shops, which is the 21st through the 30th of July. And those tickets are live on our Eventbrite website. And I've had the honor of working with Danny and Donna and RPM, our marketing team, on amazing marketing tools as well as uh, plans to really showcase what we're offering this summer. I'm really excited for, for Danny to uh, premiere the poster because it's really amazing and we got really, really excited about it. So I can't wait for you to see it. Um, we also, something that'll be different this year, we kind of touched on it last year but video clips from artists. Um, that's something we added to our proposal survey this year, was asking artists to submit their favorite, you know, 
five minute, one minute, three minute video clips or times that they've been on doing their craft. So we're gonna really include that in our promotional material um, as we tease out these classes and, and gain that interest. So we're really excited about that as well. Um, can't wait for you to see Scratchboard. Again, if you haven't Googled Scratchboard, it's super intriguing. So I recommend you look that up. Um, and then we did premiere our mixology class as our final class for our Enchanted Learn Shops. That was May 6th. Um, and I'll be able to give you all the details and analysis for that in next month's report because it did take place in May. Um, a lot of really exciting things happening with the Learn Shops. I think we have a very, a much more concrete plan of what the future looks like for this program. Uh, and I'm just excited to see the turnout and the reactions from the guests in the community. Uh, what questions do you have for me? I'll just comment. Um, Liz <laughs> has done a great job with our programs. Programs like everything else changes like the wind. What artists want to do today, they didn't want to do a year ago. So the instructors are really incredible people that are reaching out to be able to teach different types of classes for us in different art-related manners. And the new trends that are available are just really exciting. Mm -hmm. So we are meeting more and more with the different artists to hear their plans and their thoughts of what classes they do want to teach. Mm -hmm. And Liz hasn't mentioned this, but come July, right after following a week of break and rest from the craft <laughs> festival, we'll jump right into a two-week uh, festival of learn shop events that will be right here again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that will pull a thousand people into our city easy mm -hmm. for that uh, two week turnaround. So we've been bombarded, I have, I'll speak for myself, with people wanting our new, uh, thanks to Danny, a new sheet of hotels, Airbnbs, and places to reserve to stay here while they're coming. So that's a wonderful mm -hmm. sign to see. But what I'm really impressed about, I have artists calling me from Louisville, uh, Maysville, different areas, Owensboro yesterday, that they want to know more about our learn shops and how they can participate and come and be a part and teach the classes that they're doing because they're not necessarily a trend of what they're doing in their area. So uh, I look forward to all the interviews that we're doing with these different artists and different things that we can roll out because people do want to see new uh, new things to do, you know, and we can't sit on the same old things all the time. So I think it's exciting times to see Liz and I met last week and tried to figure out a strategic plan of how we want to go with the learn shops because, you know, not everything is about staying the way we were, you know. So there's so much new stuff to try and to to see and it's becoming just like I told a reporter the other day it's more about experience and engagement mm -hmm. everybody wants to do it together now uh, Rick and Pam may want to just do the cooking class together they may want to take the painting class together so it's more about a couple thing that we're seeing right now than we've ever seen in the past so I think that's an exciting adventure as well you know so great job to Liz and we're all here to support you come July the end Thank of you. July for push those two weeks out and Liz is going to carry on doing just about monthly classes uh, of new things that we're rolling out and uh, we're working on them Danny showed me a poster today so we're excited about the new that we haven't done and to see how we'll uh, attract that and move on into the new future that we are with learn shops you know absolutely. thank you and just to add to that point you're absolutely right that's been our main focus we've talked a lot about other cities that we can look at that have similar ideas and similar cultures as Berea, um, such as Bozeman, Montana and Asheville and other places. Um, but it's also really important to keep in mind that we're also keeping those traditional Appalachian crafts and arts involved with the festival as well. So you're gonna have both ends of the spectrum, which will be nice. We'll still have our, our corn chuck crafts, our broom making, wood make, um, woodwork and things like that as well. So. We want to embrace all of it. Um, so whatever medium people want to take, they'll have that opportunity. Any other questions, guys? You're like, please don't talk. <laughs> Stop. I'd just like to add that 
I'm really pleased we have a broader curriculum and I think it's going to give you a broader demographics come to the city as well and that will that will have all sorts of rewards for us thank you Liz appreciate that suffering through that <laughs> thank pain. you all I appreciate your time we'll hear from a media manager Danny Gift now Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, so as we walk through this report, um, just like I usually do, I'm not gonna go through all of the numbers. We're just gonna hit some of the highlights and talk about some of the fun things that have gone on in the last month. So um, the first thing I wanna mention, which is actually gonna be one of the first numbers that you'll see, is our total reach on Facebook. Um, this was really exciting for us because this is the very first time in the history of our social media that we have broken one million accounts reached. So now I will tell you, I cannot take all of the credit for that because a lot of that is due to our paid advertising. We can average without paid advertising anywhere from 15,000 to about 50,000 accounts reached depending on the month. But we just rolled out our spring, uh, our spring advertisements. So that's something that we put a lot of thought into. Um, Donna and I go back and forth with RPM picking the perfect photos, the, um, the right language, you know, really sort of getting into what we want to display. And um, it's working. So, so we were incredibly happy with that. Um, we ended April with 1,037,266 individual accounts reached. So we were really excited about that. Um, you'll also see once you go down to Instagram for April, that um, 346,897, that's the same thing. Um, a lot of our advertisement that we plan for Facebook um, mirrors onto Instagram. Since both platforms are owned by the same company, we basically just run it on both. So we were really, really excited with those numbers. Um, jumping down to constant contact in the green. Now, um, Aaron, if uh, you're not familiar with constant contact, this is what we use for our newsletters any of our mass emailing, things like that. Um, so we did see a drastic jump in that as well with a 47% open rate. Now to keep this in mind, the average open rate for our industry is less than 20%. So we consistently stay in the 38 to 42 range. That's typically where we are, but we did jump to 47%. And that was specifically because of our Learn Shop email that went out. Now, um, Liz and I have worked together a lot on how we can best market Learn Shops and basically get the most bang for our buck. And one of the things that we decided to do is create almost like a clickable catalog within the newsletter. So for the Enchanted Spring Learn Shops, um, I went through for every single class that she had, we had a picture, a little blurb about it, and a place where they could click the link to go straight to those tickets. Now what that did for us, aside from you know making it easier for our um, readers to get to the tickets, is that made everything trackable and traceable. So then I was able to go through and look at how many times each link was clicked, relay that information to Liz, and all of a sudden now she knows what people are most interested in. So um, for us, the top four were watercolor painting, sewing and quilting, our brand new millinery class, which we had never done before, and they were making Darby fascinators, and our jewelry. So these are the things that people were most interested in and we could start to see like in a more trackable way what, what people were interested enough in to want to click through and see the website. Um, the click rate on that was 9%, which doesn't sound like a lot, however, the industry average click rate is 0.96%, not even 1%. So we're looking at over nine times the amount that you're typically getting within the travel and tourism industry. So um, once we get down past the numbers um, into the digital media projects, so one of the big things that I've been working on again with Liz is um, completely revamping the look of Learn Shops. So I know she has done so much great work in bringing in these new instructors and these new classes that we feel like we're kind of in this 
I, I refer to it as my crafting renaissance. <laughs> so if we're going to do that, you know, and we want to market it as this great new progressive thing, we want to progress the look of it as well. So you'll see on the last page of my report in the top left hand corner, that is our new look for Learn Shops, or at least for the Festival of Learn Shops. And of course, this will change over um, over the years, and you know we'll end up going more um, into our fall colors and our Christmas colors and things like that. But we really wanted something that still showed the traditional look and the traditional logo that the Learn Shops are known for, but to sort of start to add to that, so people will associate us with change and progress and growth, and bright colors because we, we do lots of bright colors. Um, so uh, one thing that I had mentioned the last time I spoke, which I believe was in March, was that I really want to work on getting more buy-in from our local businesses in terms of helping me to support them. And by that, I mean by sending me information on their events, their sales, their special products, anything that they're proud of that they want us to be able to show off. So what I've done, this is actually the second month I have done it now, is I send out a mass email to all of our local tourism related businesses. So our shopping, our lodging, our dining, and say, what do you have that you wanna promote? And we've been getting, um, each month we get just a little bit more of people, you know, sending back, you know, this is what we have, we just got something new, you know, and that gives me a better lead on how I can help them. So that's something I've been working on. Um, now Liz did mention um, briefly the employee appreciation video. So that was a um, project that I picked up so sort of on the side, um, but it was really a great opportunity for me. Um, we did a video on um, why we serve Berea. We are in a very unique place that our tourism is part of the city government. And that's not something that a lot of um, a lot of tourisms have. So this really gave me the opportunity to meet with other departments, learn more about what they do, and get to know them while also giving them the opportunity to get to know us and to really start to build connections with these departments that, I mean, at the end of the day, we all rely on each other. So it was, it was a great experience for me to be able to start to build these bridges and open these conversations with people that typically we wouldn't talk to uh, because you never know when we may need them and you never know when they might need us. So um, that was a great project. If you haven't seen that video, um, I highly suggest it. Um, it can be found on our Facebook page. If you just click on the videos, it'll be the very first one that pops up. Um, so the last big thing that I've been working on um, in terms of our print projects, uh, this was an idea that Donna and I just kind of rolled around and um, it's not been printed yet. So we are, we're near completion, but um, people have been asking for a list of community events and at least like our major events, the, the things that we know are gonna be happening every single year. Um, so what I came up with was a 10 great times to visit Berea. This will be in the form of a rack card. And that is also on your third page if you want to take a look at that. Um, now one thing that we had decided is that we likely will not put the dates on these because once we print this, we want to be able to print enough to last us for a couple years but this opens up the conversation and then they've got the website where they can find the event and um, look up the information from there. But this will just give them a basic rundown of what, what's going on and things that they should look for when they come back. So that, oh, I do have one last page. Um, so I did want to make a couple comments about um, moving toward our annual goals. So, um, as you all know, my annual goal was a Facebook engagement of 4,000 per month. Um, we are holding steady to that. Um, March was kind of a crazy month. I can't remember right offhand what the post was, but there were a couple posts that really took off and were shared over 100 times. I believe it might have been the first post for the Special Needs Gala. So those numbers jumped up quite a bit higher, um, but we are still holding strong in April at 4,544 for engagement. So that is our likes, our comments, our shares. 
Um, and then our Facebook followers. My goal was 1,000 new followers by the end of the year. And at the end of April, we were at 454. I actually do have an update to that. As of today, we're at 564. So we are about a month and a half ahead on where I had projected us to be for the year. And that is all I have. Any questions? I don't have a question, but I have a couple comments. Um, first of all, I just want to say that's amazing that the paid advertising is um, showing just amazing results with over a million accounts. Um, and then also, I wanted to say I love this Festival of Learn Shops design. That is just perfect. The colors, the hand, the mountains. So great job. And Liz, I wanted to say too, um, just on the subject of Learn Shops, I love that we're branching out outside of the arts because um, it just includes more people that way and we're going to reach more people that way. So great job, guys. I also do have to give her some credit for the design because I really didn't know where we were going with this. So I emailed her one day and I asked her and all she said was mountains and hands. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, that, that was still more than I had at the time, so I was very much appreciative. You started to narrow me down, and we figured it out from there. Have you got her, her ears when she submits screaming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, oh, sorry. Sorry. I was just going to say it really is perfect. It just encompasses everything that Berea and the Learn Shops are. Uh, just out of curiosity, where are you seeing the most engagement from, like, cities and states as well as like age groups like what are, what are we looking at demographic wise so we are still seeing most of our engagement from over 35 female that is that is typical um, a lot of our engagement is coming specifically from Richmond Lexington Cincinnati um, Louisville and Knoxville and of course a lot of the reasoning behind that is those are the areas that we target in our um, in our paid advertising now we don't consider like when I'm looking at engagement I'm only looking at the engagement on our um, on the things that I post not the paid advertisements because what I want to see is if the people who are looking at the paid advertisements are actually looking at what we post organically and what we're seeing is that that is in fact the case we get um, almost twice as many followers um, new followers per month when we have paid advertisement going out and we can see that that demographic while we are still reaching mostly the 35 and up and mostly female it branches out into those areas that we're already targeting with our paid advertisements so it's nice to be able to see that come back and show that people are not just seeing it they're seeing it and they're actually interested Danny the the paid advertising what what's the cost of that what, what kind of cost we see in for that I can get you a breakdown because it depends on what we're putting out. Well, just like so for off the top of my head, month. I would not be able to tell you, um, but I can pull it all together for yeah, you and email I'd it to you. I'd like to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think uh, that the new learn shops, as you s spread it out, that demographic will spread out more? I think so. Um, I think we are going to start reaching a new demographic with learn shops especially as they evolve and you know we we start adding more things i was really excited to see that we have music classes this time around which um I, i'm sure might have happened before at some point but it would have been before my time um i think giving those different options and being able to market those different options we are going to start to see that demographic at least the age demographic trend down which would, would be a great thing because you know one of the things that I talked about when I first came here is that I want to broaden our demographic um, we have always known that we reach you know the 35 and up um, that most of our audience is on Facebook and it has remained that way um, it's growing which I'm absolutely thrilled by but I would like to see it grow in all directions Any other questions today? Thank you, Danny. Thank you. I love the hand. I love the new logo, and I think it's awesome. You know, Thank you. Very good. Full of life. Oh my goodness! I just I love your all's enthusiasm. You can tell you're a, you work so well together. 
you know, I remember years ago we talked about when you hire quality, you get results. And I mean, this proves it to me. And I remember when we talked about spending the money to put on Facebook, you know, and looked at our budget to do it. it I mean, it, it's obvious that I see such a difference. Just in my own business for the Airbnbs, I'm getting probably 35% of my guests are returning which is so nice for us because our houses, we know are gonna be taken care of and and they're coming back for your workshop. They're coming back a lot for Bria College. I mean, I see the college and the city, they're working together. Um, something else I wanted to say about you all in the beginning, you kind of talked about looking at other cities, what we can do. I tell you what girls, I think the cities, it's time for them to start looking at Berea. You know, because you all, and it's obvious what you said, we are the innovators and that's what we talked about three years ago that we wanted to be the best and look the best and do we have a long way to go oh yes there's always the kaizen there's always improvement but just i just want to thank you all because i mean you're everywhere i see you on facebook i see you in town you know i just i'm waiting for you all to start doing a whole lot more videos and i think that will even increase the volume Mr. Chair, I have two things, if you would allow me to share Lord, a bit of good news. Lower, yes. Backing up to what uh, Danny was talking about on our paid advertising, uh, nobody likes to pay for advertising, but it works. I think we're proof of that and so forth, and we're very pleased with what we've worked hard toward, and I'm, thank you, Laura, for recognizing that. Um, you will see uh, coming up very soon here, we're so excited about this. I got the proof the other day and I shared with Danny yesterday, I believe, uh, maybe it was today, but we will have the Bluegrass um, air Airport baggage claim uh, runway area there. We will have that whole wall of advertising coming up for June, July, and August and the ad looks beautiful. Uh, you gotta remember how many people a day are going to pick up their luggage at the luggage claim. So it's, um, last year we ran it for a short while, but it was the most successful thing that we did all year long. Two of our city council members saw it and commented on it. So other people wrote and called about it as well. So it's a huge wall as you go down that runway. Uh, so we were really delighted to host several different pieces of art and artist makers on that, scarves, jewelry. Uh, we had lots of pottery. It was just a beautiful ad and this year is as well. Plus our, uh, we will be on the cover story for Travel Host Magazine also coming out June. So that's quite an honor to be asked to be on that cover sheet. <laughs> that never happens for a magazine. I mean, that's big time. So we're thrilled that we met that goal as well and just uh, really, really happy about that piece. And the second thing I wanted to share with you is that we were very privileged as Berea Tourism last week. Um, there was um, a ceremony, a beautiful luncheon, recognizing our employees that are not in supervisory positions or management positions that are really customer service driven in our bluegrass region of tourism. So I was asked by Lexington Chamber of Commerce, visit lex.com, to nominate someone from Berea, Kentucky. So it was my privilege to nominate Wendy Robinson, who works as our part-time uh, reception at the train station. And it was really an, a remarkable day. That was the first time I've attended one of those. And it was amazing, the talent, she was just nominated, but the talent that everyone was up against with all the major hotels, with all the service divisions that they offer, restaurants, gift shops, I mean, it was really um, corporate driven in, in the Lexington area and all, but our Wendy did come through and she was nominated in her category for that award and she was very emotional and very appreciative and I think it was a beautiful day and just one more thing to put on our list that Bria is well known and that other people enjoy hearing what great service that we give at our welcome center so that was a great thing I just wanted to share that with you.
I generally talk a lot, but uh, Laura, um, you said about what I was going to say. The, <laughs> yeah. The energy in the room and the energy in this department is amazing, showing results, and uh, uh, great job, Donna, in your whole department. And again, uh, thanks to Public Works. It seems like every time you make a report, you say Public Works has helped us do this or Public Works has helped us do that. So <laughs> recognize them too. I just like to, <laughs> I actually got notes to echo Laura. <laughs> I wrote to myself, we're hitting new levels of participation, enthusiasm, professionalism. You know, and I mean, I, was, I did wrote that before your, uh, oh, wow. for your comment. It's just so obvious, and uh, it's really impressive. If uh, nobody else has anything else, we'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Take a roll call vote to adjourn. Laura? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Becky? Yes. Rick? Yes. And I... Oh yes. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you.